So with this multidisciplinary approach, and also we will uh, try to answer how multidisciplinary assessments of ecosystem services can inform spatial decision making, especially in transboundary catchments. This is part of, uh, it's one of the outputs of our research group when we find like a common uh, ground to develop, uh, develop research from different perspectives. This is under review, actually a paper in Ecosystem Services Journal for a few months, so hopefully we, we hope it will be uh, published. Like a short uh, background about so why we are looking in Ecosystem Services and, and, and how this question came to us. Global change impacts ecosystem services and affect the livelihoods of local communities worldwide. Uh, people or humans looking for their own well-being already uh, have significant degraded ecosystem services, breaching even some planetary boundaries. So repeating shortly, so why, why we are looking in these ecosystem services uh, assessment. Global change has uh, impacts on ecosystem services and it affects livelihoods of local communities worldwide. As well, humans looking for their own well-being uh, have significant affected and degraded ecosystems, making it uh, reaching already some uh, planetary boundaries. Evaluating the services is very important to gain knowledge about it and try to include this knowledge in the future implementation of sustainable development strategies, as well as policy design and regional planning. The inclusion, on the other hand, the inclusion of local knowledge to address contemporary global environmental issues is key to achieve a transformative change. It is regarding the last um, uh, publication of IPES, where they defined that the inclusion of different types of knowledge, like worldviews for local communities, is very important and should be included to, to reach this transformative change. It drives us to have two goals in this uh, research. So the first is to develop a framework to analyze the relationships and the spatial complementarity of monetary and geophysical assessments, evaluations of ecosystem services, and the second is to identify if areas from ethnic territories require different types of ecosystem services management. It will be definitely because uh, each of them has like unique monetary, biophysical and social specific specificities. With this, I will take you to the study site. Uh, one of the focus areas uh, geographically for our project is the SDG Nexus Network is in Latin America, Ecuador and Colombia. And then we choose the study site there in this very high dynamic catchment. This is the Miramataje catchment. Uh, and it's a transboundary one that is located between Ecuador and Colombia. Um, you will see in, the, in this part, more or less the location where the catchment is. It drains to the um, Andean mountains to the Pacific coast. In the left side panel, you will see some pictures of the, of the main river in the catchment. It's quite wide in the part of the coast already. And also in the down, the picture to show that social dynamics uh, um, exist there and also the dynamic of uh, um, population uh, happens along the river. Uh, why would you say the transboundary catchment? Uh, so normally transboundary things make the things a bit more difficult. However, it is challenging to research in these areas to, to get some insights and in how it happens. Problems in transboundary catchments that the data is different from every country and the standardized database normally is quite challenging or some parameters in one country mean something and could be the same name for the parameters, but the other side means another th another thing. The spatial resolution is, is different, and then is why uh, we we look from a global available data set. Even so, could be that the resolution working with local or national data could be higher. However, to, to avoid this um, mismatch of data, and also to make this framework apply it in, in any other different uh, area of the world following similar assessments. This catchment, as mentioned, it is, uh, has a re uh, nearly 12,000 square kilometers uh, range of altitude from zero to nearly uh, 500 meters above the sea level. Precipitation range between uh, 540 to nearly 8,000 millimeters per year, but it's quite high, looking for this point. And the, Higher precipitation is coming in, in, in the area nearly um, in the Colombian side, nearly the border. Also some part of this bio corridor uh, Choco in this uh, area. In the right side panel, you will see how the distribution of the ethnic territories are in, in dark colors and gray scale colors uh, are the Afro descendant ethnic communities. And in orange colors are the indigenous communities in the area. 
regarding data and methods, as I briefly even, uh, mentioned it before. So going for global available data sets, like in the example, there are some of the inputs are, for example, clim climate data, population density, land cover, uh, digital elevation model, and many others. That these are freely available uh, in Sim Tierra database, and these are as input of this ecosystem services uh, assessment. To assess the ecosystem services, we use it a um, modeling and mapping tool named Costing Nature, and the resolution will uh, we what assess is one uh, square kilometer. This could be even finer uh, when it's uh, inside inside of our own frame. So I will highly recommend if using Costing Nature to check because there are areas where the resolution can be improved even. We have the case that we use a one kilometer resolution to assess uh, several ecosystem services for the monetary as well for the biophysical point of view. Uh, regarding some potential ecosystem services, some of them are named there, like water uh, provision, grazing, carbon sequestration, uh, and so on. Uh, we also computed like a total of these potential ecosystem services to know in the catchment. So this area is more or less like a like a sum up of the services it produced. And uh, in addition, we evaluate the current pressures and future threats in the in the catchment. This was complementary with some soft data that we collected from some face-to-face uh, -face, uh, semi-structured interviews. Our goal at that moment was to make like a kind of workshops or try to uh, reach more type of surveys to the community and so on. But this research was done still in the time with uh, Corona was still having some restrictions for traveling to the area. Plus, we should consider that we are in a very conflictive area in the world between Ecuador and Colombia with a lot of uh, still like illegal things are happening and then for that is uh, complex to reach this area but luckily we have a really nice social political guy involved in the group and he went to the area he talked to the people to the leaders of some communities to get also their perspectives and their needs regarding the ecosystem services To start with the results, uh, the first part, as mentioned, was the monetary assessment. So regarding this monetary assessment, Cost in Nature requests an uh, input table. So this input table is with the use values of, of different ecosystem services. These were estimated based on market prices and economic estimations. So the market prices were basically looking in, in global data sets, uh, World Bank, uh, our world in data, in information like this. And for the economic estimates, what was done, so what we identified was one of the main biomas in the catchment, we in this case like forests in the middle of the catchment, mangroves in the part of the coast, um, paramos in the upper part of the catchment, analyzing the, the, the biomas itself and checking which ecosystems were integrated in one of each bioma. Later to have a value for the total catchment, it was aggregated from the different biomas, the ecosystems that match. So if we have in forests, let's put again an example, some percentage of water production, and we have another percentage of water, produ uh, water production in the paramos, so they were summed up to have one over the, the full catchment. Um, as output of this analysis, in the right side, you will see like two maps. And the first uh, in blue colors is the spatial distribution of uh, a monetary of dollars, basically how it is evaluated in the catchment. And as it's clear to see, for example, where the cities are located, the economic value or monetary value is much higher, also roads, and in some part close to uh, small rivers and in the, in the coast side as well, regarding like some economic and some uh, also like mangroves and rainforest uh, location. In the next panel, in the right side, in red, uh, we included like in a, a, a threshold above what we could consider that we need to protect uh, the, the ecosystems. This threshold was established by Mark Mulligan. And he, in the reasonable way to say, we cannot protect all what you would like to protect all, but it's not uh, uh, possible. And this threshold means like the values that are higher than 0 0.5 of the average value of the catchment. So all the high values are in plotted in, in red here. Uh, as you see, the value of this catchment is like nearly 2 billion euros in ecosystem services per year. And this uh, 
as I mentioned, it's located more close to cities in, in the coast side and close to infrastructure road access uh, in the catchment. So now we see in, in the economic side more uh, a standard, more traditional way to see the ecosystem, how they serve us. Uh, but if we also look in the biophysical assessment, so it's not necessarily much, you know, it's like a different spatial distribution. In the left side panel, you will see the total potential services, as I explained, it, like summing up all the 13 ecosystem services analyzed. And it shows us where the, where the potential is, where it is there, not necessarily use it, but the potential to produce ecosystem services is. Um, in the upper panel, the first total potential services, the second is the current pressures, and the third is the future threats. Current pressures are basically based on the amount of infrastructure, uh, the amount of population, uh, trends of deforestation that happen in the area. And the future threats are also pressures, but uh, projected in future. So what will be then the uh, influence of climate change to 2050 in this case, with land use change, and also if the deforestation follows the same patterns. In the down panel, they are the, the same, but with the same logic that before. So where the values are more than 0 0.5 of the average of the catchment are the areas marked in red. Between these three, total uh, potential services, current pressure, and future threats, we wanted to, to analyze if there is some spatial pattern, some com complementarity, some opposite. So what can we get from this information with the, the ecosystem services from the bio uh, biophysical assessment are. And th the plot here shows uh, like every uh, valuation, uh, pressures and threats uh, against each other to, to check the trends. In that case, uh, well, all of them are not, many of them are not directly uh, relation between each other. However, between current pressure and potential services, we can say some trends, so like less current pressure, and we have like higher potential ecosystem services. Same, uh, similar trend, these are around uh, minus 0 0.6, the first one I show it here. And this is around 0 0.5 positive, like it's like more uh, current pressure related with more, with higher economic uh, monetary assessment. When we want to assess this to now to, to, to narrow down how, how is ha what is happening and how it is in the ethnic communities and the indigenous and Afro-descendant communities uh, in the catchment, uh, it is for the spatial pattern to see. So it's the monetary, uh, monetary assessment in the next side, like total potential services, current pressures and future threats. And here we won't go deep in all the difference and so on, but to check the, the, the trends that exist. If we see, for example, in the, in the area here where we mentioned it, uh, the um, indigenous communities lives, uh, there is not much economic valuation as uh, there is not big cities and no big infrastructure there. Uh, however, the, the, the forest in um, ecosystem that exists there uh, has a high potential to, to be produced. Regarding the current pressure in the same uh, indigenous communities here, they see that actually they don't face that high um, current pressures. But if you see in future threats, we see like a, a, a big increase in, in, the, in the pressure that they will face in future. If we keep on eye again in, in another community, for example, if we see here in this, uh, that is um, indigenous communities in the uh, Afro communities in the highlands, the monetary evaluation is a bit higher, also maybe related to some infrastructure that already exists in some cities. Uh, however, they have not much to much potential services producing. Even so, that this community is close to to the to the Paramos area that is very well known for the water production. But in the sum up of all the services, it's not really high the the, the production of the potential services that are in this uh, area. However, the pressures, no? How are the pressures in this area? Again, like a human influence, the many overuse or overexploitation of resources. This community has uh, face uh, is facing high pressures. Uh, however, for future, uh, see that this uh, it will even reduce a little bit the pressures they have. 
it could be possible that in this area as some agricultural uh, line already has some policies to don't increase more there or some could have some effect and don't have uh, land use changes strongly in in the area however um, in in the coast side we have not much uh, between current pressures and future trends not much change um, being the more critical in this case the change that will happen for the i guess our community the indigenous community in the uh, the Ecuador and Colombia, like binational community. Uh, here, if you see, for example, the current pressures are in blue and the gray uh, are the threats that they will uh, potentially face in the future. You see that for the AWA community, it uh, tremendously increase in the future. So to give us some uh, alert to what will happen there. Uh, lastly, uh, we include some local knowledge as it was recommended for to reach this tr transformative change and this is coming for interviews to the community leaders in the upper panel i, I apologize it is in it is in spanish the interviews were conducted in spanish and analyzed through in vivo so some results are in spanish but uh, what we can highlight from the from all them saying that community the, the more repeated words like water territories communities uh, they show like the problems, uh, they have like climate involved um, in, in people. So th for them it's important people and territories. Overall for the interviews, what could uh, we take out is that they have a solid knowledge, the indigenous leaders express a solid knowledge on ecosystem services conservation, but that their opinion is barely considering development of policies for their own territories. Uh, they mentioned that as well that the communities like themselves deal with environmental issues. They don't have much external support for actors. And so they act in a very decentralized manner and include sustainable practices since immemorial uh, in times. With this so based in like the spatial analysis that we did before and local knowledge, we identify some different spatial requirements, different spatial needs for the communities. For the AWA, for example, that is market in the lower panel in the left side, a market in, in with the blue circle. Uh, the AWA community, for them, the ecosystems are vital for livelihoods, for um, cultural identity, for well-being, and they have an intrinsic belonging to the community and the territories. Uh, one of the expressions was to say, if the forest will be um, taken over, uh, the, the full community is not the same. So I cannot be, uh, my, my identity is me, is the territory uh, are the forest. So they don't, it's not the case that they could be removed, put it in another area because they belong to. Um, and for the spatial pattern, we see that in future, they will have uh, high future uh, threats. What could be derived from there is that potentially in the base of policies or some recommendations get, get, that can be done, is that Ecuadorian and Colombian governments should recognize there was a key actor for protecting the ecosystem services as well to increase control on the territories to reduce extractivist, uh, extractive frontiers. For the other communities, so Afro descendants in the coast, so locals and external actors are involved in palm oil monocrops that are expanding very fast, so this will have some effects as deforestation as, and then the ecosystem services that come through this, like carbon sequestration, one of them, for example, and shrimp farming, it will have impacted the mangroves and for that the ecosystems they could um, generate. And this could be said then that controls over the expansion of monocrops and potentially the payment for ecosystem services to landowners, in that case, they won't be potentially be in the need to be working or renting the land for palm oil monocrops. So third, last but not least, we also look at in the Afro-descendant communities or territories in the highlands. Uh, they have a strong contrast between pressures and total potential services can be uh, interpreted as like over-exploitation of, of services. Intensive, they mentioned it, intensive use of pesticides in agriculture and intensive likely, uh, livestock farming. And plus that these territories are not recognized as indigenous territories in the Ecuadorian law. 
so what could be recommended is that first and all promote transition to uh, towards sustainable production and recognition of cost recognition of the territories as many policies for conservation uh, for development and so on are based on land recognition and land ownership Uh, with this, we reached our conclusions. So the Mira Meta catchment is uh, monetarily valued in nearly two billion uh, US dollars per year. It's calculated with prices of 2022. The upper and lower catchment areas are like in high pressure, while mid catchment areas uh, has like a high potential of produce or bring ecosystem services. However, it will have uh, problems having pressure in the future. Uh, the, the identification of different uh, areas for special decision making can only be uh, combined, co can be done combining multiple dimensions of ecosystem services analysis. Um, so taking the social part in this, that is um, always a bit challenging to, to have like the biophysical, uh, economic and plus the social part involved. We can say that the social path always improve our point of view, always improve our results and, and increase our perspective of what's happening on the territories and on land. With this, we provide uh, some advances on the assessment of ecosystem services approaches. Um, we highlight, uh, we bring as well insights for potential integration of this uh, knowledge into regional planning and sustainable policies in the future. With this, I would like to say thank you very much for your attention. And